Welcome to Podcast 3.3C. Yes, we're still in Section 3, but uh, what we're going to be dealing with today is probably one of the most fascinating aspects of uh, the atom. And uh, what you're going to see in class as far as the demos is really going to be impressive to you. So this is all about electrons and light. If you recall our last podcast, we learned about electron configuration and where the electrons go. Uh, in the orbitals. And now what we're going to do is talk about what happens to an atom when you pump in a little bit of energy. And this diagram right here that we've had, we've, we saw this as the Bohr model, and we talked about electrons going from uh, one energy level to the next. So imagine an electron going from, here's the first energy level to the second one. All right? Now that happens when an electron gets excited. Um, but before I talk about that, I want to talk about just uh, the basic energy state of an atom. Let's think about the electron configuration of a carbon atom, for example. So carbon has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, all right? And so in the p orbitals, let's imagine this n equals 2 are those uh, those those four electrons, those in the S and the P, right? Those four electrons, I'm just going to space them out here. Not saying necessarily this is the way it works, but let's just pretend, okay? Those four electrons are sitting in that second energy level. And then there's two, of course, in this first energy level. Now, what this is called right here for those six electrons is called the ground state. And the ground state is just the lowest energy state of an atom. And if you recall from our diagram, electrons will always occupy the lowest energy state. And when they fill up orbitals, they always filled up the 1s before the 2s and so on, going from lowest to highest. And so think of the ground state as kind of how you would prefer to be maybe on a weekend. If you had your choice, <clears throat> most of you would probably either be sleeping in or laying on a couch, um, doing something that doesn't require a lot of energy. Most of you wouldn't be choosing to run a marathon, all right? So let's just say, for argument's sake, that at any time an atom is just sitting there and all its electrons are at its lowest energy state. We call that the ground state. Now, what happens next is we pump in some energy. And so let's just say that one of these electrons in the second energy level actually gets excited enough to go to the third energy level. Now the thing to remember is all these energy levels have to do with how much energy an atom has. Now how did this electron get excited? Well let's say we added some electricity to it or we heated it up, we put it in a flame. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can excite it but basically uh, when you add energy okay, an, an electron can go to its excited state. Alright, all right. so the excited state, let's just pop out this definition right here, is when an electron has a higher potential energy than its ground state. So we've added energy to the electrons. So let's say um, if I were to draw the, uh, the arrow diagram, right, uh, of carbon, and I'm going to use this as my example. Uh, let's see, I've got C, so I've got the 1S, and we've got two electrons there, the 2s, two electrons there, and now in the 2p, right? I've got one electron here, but let, let's say that that other electron, I'm going to erase this part right here so we can get out of the way. Let's say we've got sitting up here uh, the 3s, right? Let's say one electron went up into the 3s, and that's what I'm trying to represent right here. Now, that is not a normal situation for carbon, because as you guys know from our electron configuration, there should be uh, an arrow right there. But instead, it's been excited, we added some energy, and so it's sitting up here, right? And then this is really the cool part about this. The, the, the cool part about all this is this electron up here that's excited is only going to stay there for a brief instant. And what's going to happen is it's going to want to come back down 
to its ground state. All right. Yes, you've ran the marathon, but you'd much rather be sitting in a chair relaxing. Okay, so it wants to come back down to its ground state. Well, when it does that, it's got to release the energy that it gained when it got to uh, when it went to an excited state. And that's what this little arrow that's been sitting here this whole time. I told you we'll talk about this later. Okay, all this arrow is showing is that here's an electron going from the third energy level down to the second, and here's a wavelength which represents uh, energy. And that energy is leaving. All right. Now this delta E just means the change in energy equals a constant times uh, the frequency. And, we'll, and we're actually going to be dealing with that with our, our next podcast. But the important thing is, is when you get uh, that dropping from a higher energy state to a lower energy state, you get what we call light emission. And that's what this one is. And this is probably the coolest thing. Every year, students are amazed at the demos we do here and, we, and the lab we do with this stuff because it's really pretty unique to understand that these atoms are giving off characteristic light. And in fact, uh, this light is particular for each element. And what I have right here, if you look at this picture, um, this is uh, helium. No, I'm sorry. This is hydrogen being excited. And you can kind of see it gives off, I don't know what color that is, kind of a violet, uh, I don't know, reddish violet color. And so what that uh, is doing is electricity is being pumped into that tube. That tube is full of hydrogen. And as electrons, let's imagine an electron going from a 1s up to a 2s. Okay, let's say an electron's right here, but it, it goes up to a 2s as you pump in energy but then it goes back down and back down to here to the 1s well when it does it's going to give off light and the light it gives off is this reddish violet light and so it's pretty pretty neat um let's see let's see what i got here over here Oh, that's okay. That's exactly what I'm saying. So that occurs when electron moves from the excited state to the ground state. All right. It's a very unique process. It's really quite amazing. We're going to look at a bunch of elements and uh, look at the characteristic light they give off. Now, the cooler thing is, is if you look uh, at this light through a diffraction grading. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's say known as a spectroscope, which we will, you will see that the lines are actually, uh, uh, pardon me, that, that the light is split up into lines. And that is what this is representing right here. Now, you've probably done, seen a diffraction grain if you ever uh, pulled out of a box of cereal magic rainbow glasses and you put them on and they make all the light look like rainbows. Or maybe you've gone to zoo lights and, and they gave you those glasses. So you've seen that before. But it, what a diffraction grain does is it separates the light into the basic colors into bands. It's kind of like if you had some glasses that could, or a prism, that you could hold up to sunlight and it showed all seven colors of the rainbow. All right. And so now what happens is when we look through a diffraction grating at these elements that give off this light, you see three distinct colors. Now though there's three distinct colors, when uh, combined to our big clunky eyes that can't separate light, look like that. Okay. But what's very unique about this is this right here is the fingerprint of the element. And so this becomes a really useful tool in identifying elements because scientists can look at light given off by the, by the element, look at these lines, these are called spectral lines, and go, oh, it has these lines, that matches up with this element, and therefore we know what it is. In fact, this is how uh, helium was discovered. All right? They discovered helium on the sun. And obviously they didn't go to the sun, get a scoop of sun, and test it, right? 
But they looked up at the sun uh, through a uh, spectroscope, and they noticed there were some lines that they didn't recognize. A line here, maybe a line there, maybe a line there. And uh, so they, they figured, wow, there must be some element that we don't know of yet. We'll call it helium uh, after helios, which means, the, uh, which means I think, light or sun in uh, Greek or Roman language. Okay, So it was a very useful uh, thing in discovering helium on the sun before they ever found it on Earth. And so we're going to do a lab with light emission. I'm going to excite some atoms for you so you can see them go from their ground state to their excited state. It's going to be really cool. This also is uh, how fluorescence works. F-L-U-O-R-C-E-N-C. By the way, I know I'm probably butchering so many words right here because I'm a horrible speller. You guys have figured that out. And so I know I've just killed that fluorescence. Uh, and... Uh, but why things kind of glow in the dark, that has to do with this too. And so we're going to show you all that stuff. It's going to be really cool. And again, this is usually one of uh, students' most favorite parts. So that's exciting electrons, ground state, excited state, light emission. And, uh, oh, you know the last thing this is, this has to do with? And maybe you already said this. Fireworks. Right? Think about it. You pump, You put some elements in a ball. You shoot it up in the sky, you explode it, that definitely gives it some energy, right? And so all those different colors are based on the, the atoms that are involved in those uh, fireworks, whether it's red, greens, blues, whites, and uh, I'll talk about those when I do the demonstrations. So hopefully this makes sense. Again, like always, bring some questions to me if you have them, and uh, we'll talk next time.